Welcome to One on One and One on Two. In this case, it is our honor to uh, welcome Amy Shear, Chief Commercial Officer at New York Red Bulls, and John Wallenek, uh, who is head coach and manager, New York Red Bulls, too. Um, let's set this up. Red Bulls started when? Uh, 22 years ago. This is our 22nd season, one of the original members of Major League Soccer. And today, but I ask you this right before we get on the air. How many teams in the league right now? Currently 22. 22. 22 teams. Yeah. Uh, soccer growing by leaps and bounds. Leaps and bounds. Every metric that you look at in the world of Major League Soccer is growing. Ratings are up, attendance is up, merchandise sales are up, sponsorship revenue is up. So across the board, uh, we average 21,000 fans a game, so we're, we're growing. 21,000? Yeah. How'd you get into this whole thing? Uh, as a kid, uh, my, up? I grew up in Staten Island, New York. So I'm a local guy. Uh, my parents, my dad was a track athlete, wanted me to run, decided soccer was a good sport. They had no idea what was going on, but uh, became good at it and just kept, kept going. Went to college at Fordham University on a scholarship and then luckily enough got drafted and then played with a bunch of different teams on the professional level and then uh, was fortunate enough to finish my career at Red Bull and the transition to coaching took place uh, in 2010 when I stopped playing. You love soccer, you love coaching. What is it about the game? For those of us who have been involved in other sports, I tell you our, our kids have all played soccer, but mm -hmm. our daughter Olivia is by far the best soccer player. Plays in the Montclair Dome, which is a great place, right? Mm -hmm. You guys both know it well. Mm -hmm. What is it about soccer? Uh, I see it as a huge challenge. I was always uh, someone that took on challenges head on and uh, enjoyed um, you know, forcing myself to get better. Uh, I feel like there's a, it's the type of sport where you could be 5'2", you could be 6'2", you could be 200 pounds, you could be 150 pounds, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can find a way to be successful at the game. There's a lot of ways to get better as far as technical, can you kick a ball well, can you kick it better, uh, tactical, do you understand how, how the players move on the field? Um, and then it's, it's just a lot of ways to get better and at it. And also where you live does not matter as well if the opportunity is presented to these young people. Talk about what the Red Bulls are doing in terms of trying to help kids in urban areas get into the game? Sure. So we have what we call our urban soccer program, uh, which is part of our Red Bull training programs. So we've got... What is it? Red Bull? Red Bull training oh, programs. Tra Red yeah. Bull training program in urban... Only in urban areas? No. We've got 43,000 kids that participate in our training programs across the tri-state area. As part of those 43,000 kids, what we do is we provide free programming in underserved neighborhoods. So Ironbound in Newark, we provide free programs for them. So the kids uh, in those underserved neighborhoods have an avenue to participate in the sport and get the same level of instruction that your daughter does. So we make sure we're a good community partner and doing the right thing and that everybody has a chance to play and learn the right way. Yeah, well, let's talk about this a little bit. The other piece of it um, in terms of the Red Bulls is that you're also committed to trying to promote healthy eating. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about that piece of it? Sure. So Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, which is one of our major partners. Uh, very one of our major funders as well here at Public Broadcasting. Yes. We love working with Jonathan Pearson. And by the uh, way, their CEO, Bob Marino, serves on the board mm -hmm. of Public Broadcasting here in the state. Mm -hmm. So go ahead. Uh, but great partners with us. And uh, they really make sure that the wellness message is a part of everything that they do. So part of our initiative now going into the third year is a Healthy Goals concession stand at Red Bull Arena. What's it called? Healthy Goals. Healthy Goals. Go yeah. ahead. So it's a separate build-out within our arena, uh, which has healthy options for our fans to eat. So when you come to a game, although our service provider for concessions does a very good job, this gives you an alternative to have low-fat, healthy variety food. What kind of demand is there for it? There's a good demand. You know, we have between 35 and 40 percent women, and I, I think that's, you know, when I say when I go to arena, that's where I would go to eat. Right. Uh, so we have a good demand. It's grown over the three years. Uh, the first year, you know, we messaged it. We made sure we got people there, and word of mouth spread, and every year, year over year, it's grown. So there's I mean, a good demand. Yeah, you know, as we talk about this, what I'm curious about for, for people involved in management, if you will, with the Red Bulls, it's one thing to love the sport, but to also have a team, an organization, be committed to community involvement. Mm -hmm. Was that something you were aware of early on and that you're, because we pulled you into this and you get, I don't want to say pulled into, you participate in a lot of different mm -hmm. things. Is that part of what a team, an organization, professional operation should be doing? Yeah, I believe so. I'm, I'm a New Yorker. I grew up here. I, I appreciate when the New York franchises uh, participate in their communities and help out and give back. Uh, as a player, a professional player, I, I was uh, uh, tasked to go into uh, communities and, and help promote the sport, but at the same time help promote um, healthy lifestyles and education and schooling. So I've spent a lot of time in uh, 
wearing a, a Red Bull polo in a school mm -hmm. and, and talking about education and the importance of that. So. You know, I remember having a conversation with um, some of the New York football giants. Uh, and by the way, there are New York-based New York teams who often play New Jersey, and mm -hmm. it's the case with the Giants as well. But we're doing an in-depth interview, by the way, check on our website, steveadovato.org. You see an interview we did with uh, the great Eli Manning. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about the Tackle Kids Cancer Initiative mm -hmm. with uh, Hackensack, with Hackensack Meridian Health. Mm -hmm. That is, in fact, in fact, Eli Manning, uh, the NFL recognized him for his work that he's been doing with Tackle mm -hmm. Kids Cancer. You have a connection to it as well. We do as well. So uh, Luis Robles is our partner. Uh, he's our goalkeeper. And he loves this charity, as do our, as do our, our team members in our club. Uh, for every save that Luis makes, we donate $375 to Tackle Kids Cancer. Every time he stops a goal. Every time he stops a goal, uh, money is donated to Tackle Kids Cancer. And, you know, I, I think what is a testament to our players is that, yes, Luis got started on behalf of the New York Red Bulls, but he spends a significant amount of his own time with the charity as well. So he, as a person, has taken this very seriously and does plenty of visits and plenty of appearances on his own for Tackle Kids Cancer. And as an organization, we support mm. it as well. Uh, but it's, we love it. We love it. It's, it's a great, great charity and an important one. Where is soccer going in this country? Because some, I was over in Spain a few years back um, and went to see um, the soccer museum Mm -hmm. I was thinking it was in Madrid or, or Sevilla. I'm not, not sure where it was. And I remember the history of soccer was played out there. Mm -hmm. Soccer in Europe is one thing. Soccer here is another. But it is growing by leaps and bounds here, correct? It is. Uh, the, it's the number one youth sport in the country. So that will continue to grow and lead into, I think, more fans. Uh, again, we talked about it earlier. All the metrics are going up. I think uh, MLS, Major League Soccer, has done a great job of growing the international audience for us as well. So I think abroad we're looked at now differently, better than maybe we were previous. But the sport just continues to grow. And again, you know, we average over 21,000 fans a game. All of the new clubs that are coming in have... Where are some, excuse me, where are some of the teams? You're saying, is it Atlanta? Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Orlando. There's a bunch of new teams. Minnesota. Are, Minnesota, a new team this year. LA is getting a second team. Minnesota has a big soccer team. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, we make these, sometimes I'll make these assumptions mm -hmm. about geography and weather, and, but there are places to play. Yeah, you know, in soccer, you play through anything. As long as there's no lightning, <laughs> snow, rain, sleet, it doesn't matter. The soccer's played through everything. So it is different from baseball in terms of, hey, listen, we're going to call this game in the sixth inning. Doesn't happen in soccer? No, for the, I mean, listen, it, weather can always uh, change the game, but. Uh, for the most part, we played through almost any weather. I mean, there's been, uh, I think, Minnesota's first game this year uh, was there was snow on the, on the turf field. No, there and, wasn't. Yeah. yeah, and they had to play with an orange ball and all that stuff. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, they played with an orange ball? Yeah. yeah. Played yeah. Some, to make sure you could see um, it. Yeah. Yeah. Two years ago, we had a game in Colorado. We played yeah. through several inches of snow. Yeah. Fascinating. Before yeah. I let you out of here, yeah. the player base that you have, and by the way, the Red Bulls two team. That is the describe what that is for people. Yeah, so it's a second division team. So we play in the what is called the USL, the United Soccer League. Yeah. So it's a it's a similar thing to AAA in baseball. It's a minor league team. Um, it's a place where some of the younger players, some of the players that aren't involved in, in games week in week okay. out, get to have games. And it's also younger players that get to uh, prove themselves at a professional what do you level. We got never back. We have a little gift for you. So, you got a gift for me? Yeah. So we I got to report this to the PBS officials. You know, we wanted to be good guests. Standards and practice, legal. Make sure that this, we brought a, a gift. A oh, new, you're kidding. Um, a new number yeah. one fan. So in honor of one one-on-one, we oh, figured, look, figured we'd put a one Get this, guys. It. You get this? And uh, just a pleasure to be here. So we wanted to be grateful and uh, have a good guest. This is so great. I can't thank you enough. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. By the way, I know what's going to happen when I get home with our kids. Anything really cool <laughs> we ever get. By the way, this is awesome. That part is great, but this part's about a thousand times better. The Red Bulls, an organization mm -hmm. that is committed to not just excellence on the field, mm -hmm. but making a difference off the field. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you for being with us and spreading the word, and um, it's a great sport. Thank you for having us. Thank appreciate you. Your time. Appreciate it. We really appreciate Thanks. it. Thank you. Check it out. We'll be right back right after this. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. 
Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, Wells Fargo, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, Hackensack University Health Network, Hackensack University Medical Center Foundation, NJM, and by Partners for Health Foundation. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios.